guys, um, my name is Lynn. I am one half of the um, art duo Lulu Lynn. So that means that I work with a partner in creating all my paintings and sometimes we do like comics and other creative stuff like that. So for today, um, I decided to answer a question that we actually get a lot um, at cons, um, which is how do we do our prints? Hey guys, so we're just gonna break down the cost of self printing versus print shops. So under self-printing, what you got to pay for is going to be the paper, the ink, your time, um, which isn't necessarily always like counted on a dollar to dollar basis, but that's something that you should take into account as well. Um, there is also the printer, which you'll have to buy, and also installing it with a CISS, which is a continuous ink system. Um, for you know just a lowering the the cost of the ink and i'll show you guys the setup that i have um, when we get upstairs for the shop printing it's a bit more simple um, it's just a cost for a sheet um, for anywhere between usually what i find is that smaller prints so up to like eight by ten it costs around a dollar to two dollars per print and then for larger prints it costs somewhere around um i'm going to say 250 to five dollars and keep in mind I have not used this print shop for a couple of years, so these numbers may be a couple years old, although um, I've spoken to friends recently and you know they seem to be still kind of in the same ballpark. So that's going to be kind of what you'll be pay paying if you go with the print shop option. On the self-printing front, the paper that I buy, which is the Canson XL watercolor paper, is anywhere between 15 cents per page and 30 cents per page. I have two different sides of prints, so that's the smaller size and that's the larger size. Um, for the ink, um, it averages somewhere between three to uh, around six cents per print. And then there's the time factor, which is just, you know, you have to decide how much time you have to dedicate towards it. Um, and then besides that, there's the printer, which will run you somewhere between $250 and $500. When I bought my printer, it was about $320. And I'll show you guys which one I'm using later on. And then the CISS system, that can run you anywhere between $30 and $80. Um, and usually it comes already outfitted with the ink for your first run. So these up here, are your per print costs. Every time you print something, it's gonna cost you that much. These are one-time costs. So, you know, that is gonna be averaged out over the life of your printer. I will say that like my printer, I've been using it for quite a few years, uh, probably, I wanna say like five years or so. So, you know, it's still going strong. I've printed, you know, hundreds, thousands of sheets of paper with it, and you know, it's still working just fine. I just have to kind of clean it regularly. Um, I have gone through quite a few CISS systems. I think I'm on my like third one over the course of three to five years. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, so as far as the paper and the ink, that's gonna run you somewhere between 18 cents and 36 cents. Okay, so that's going to be your per sheet costs over here. And so you're going to be comparing these numbers to, of course, these numbers over here. And you'll see that they're a lot cheaper. Um, and, you know, over here, I guess I also left off the shipping. But that really varies based off of where you get it. And also if you can print it locally, of course, you won't be paying shipping. So these are kind of the cost breakdowns. And... Um, Let's go upstairs and take a look at the printer setup.
So you can see it's printing something right now. This is one of our paintings. It is our green currents painting right here, or the green depth painting, I'm sorry. Um, and it just finished up. This whole thing right here is something that I have added onto it. It is a continuous ink system. So you can see um, when you buy it, you get those, these, this set of six um, ink cartridges that are specially modded to put in, and it's connected via this cable that runs the ink to this little thingy. I do not have illicit drugs here. These are just like cute little message pills. Um, <laughs> It runs via this cable down here to this ink tank that you can refill. Um, and it, of course, refills with bottles and you don't have to mess with um, taking those out to refill it. Now, a lot of printers, this one included, has um, a feature in there where it automatically detects when the ink is like low or gone. It's not actually measuring the ink level, it really is just like a timer set based off of how much yellow, black, whatever ink it thinks it's used. So when it thinks that it should be dry, it'll tell you, oh look, it's doing it right now, that there's an ink problem and that the cyan is out. This is actually really well timed. So um, whenever it does this, you have to just kind of press that and let it come over and pull it out so that it um, disconnects a little bit and then just push it back in. And that's just for the, um, the little chip, um, the electronic chip on the front of it to disconnect and then reconnect. And now it thinks that it's loaded with a new um, cartridge. And then you can press this and it'll go back Come back and it'll be like, oh, you loaded a new blue one in. Um, you have a lot of options when it comes to these wide format printers. Um, I would make a few recommendations. Um, one is to research the continuous ink system, which is often abbreviated as CIS or CISS um, system, um, and see whether there is one that is made specifically for the printer that you want um, so that you can hook this up and not have to keep repurchasing the really pricey ink. Um, the other thing is to make sure that you buy a printer that has these separate ink colors. So this one comes with six different colors. Um, some of them have three, some of them have more. I think I've seen one with seven or eight different colors. It's really good to have these separate ink colors because like a lot of the times like you know this painting in particular is mostly green so it's going to use a lot of like blue and yellow and then you know if you're using a regular printer where the three colored ones are in the same cartridge you're just going to end up throwing away a lot of the pink um, and just kind of like unused portions. So um other than that, a couple of troubleshooting issues. Okay, so here's like a troubleshooting issue that you sometimes run into. Um, because, is this focusing? Let's focus this. Here we go. Okay, so see all this black that's ending up on this print right here? And also, there's a little dot right there. So, um... When these get printed, they're mostly fine, but every once in a while you get something where there's like ink blots all over it. And that's just because there's, you've like printed too many prints and now there's excess ink that's sort of um, on the side of the printer. So if you see right here and look over here, there's like a little grid. That grid has a piece of foam in it. And um, for every, I don't know, I would say like, somewhere between 20 and 50 prints, you kind of have to go in with a Q-tip and clean it out. Um, it just gets too much ink in it, and then when this printer head goes over it each time, sometimes it'll drag the ink back out and get it all over your prints. 
So that has to be clean, and then sometimes the printer head has to be clean, which is a big pain in the ass. So I'm not going to show you guys, but you can Google that for your particular printer and see. All right, and for the last thing that I'm going to show you guys, um, if I can get this to focus here, is um, the the organizational system that I'm using. So all of these are just prints of the same size, 12 by 18, stacked together. And then at the very top of each one, I just put a little sticky note on it. This way you don't waste a lot of space for, um, for you know, folders or boxes or, you know, separate envelopes, that sort of stuff. So you can just stack them all together. Um, Find like a box that is the appropriate size to put it in if you're saving it at home. If you're taking it to a convention, a lot of times what I will do is um, save these cardboard pieces. So these are just the cardboard pieces from when I buy the paper. Like when I buy a packet of paper, it comes with a piece of backing. Um, you just save these. You put one on each side of it and then if you have a plastic bag that like fits very snugly you can put this whole thing in the plastic bag if you don't take some cellophane and just wrap it around this way and wrap it tight and that will get you to like a big block of paper and when you have that it doesn't really get damaged as much it's very easy to carry around so um so yeah so that is how I do my prints and how I store them and how you can transport them to the con. So um, if you have any questions, um, business or art related, um, feel free to comment below. And I'm going to try to do a video every week, um, either answering a question or vlogging an experience or, um, you know, going to a con or anything like that. And um, yeah. So hope to see you guys every week. Click the subscribe button so you can follow me to all the cons that I'm going to, which I'm also going to post um, down there. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Lynn from the art duo Lulu Lynn. We are going to be opening up Honey Art Cafe at the end of summer 2016 in this very space. We're going for demo chic. I think we nailed it. <laughs> um, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more updates on Honey Art Cafe as well as more videos on art and business. You can also follow us on any social media platform at Lululin Art or on Facebook and Instagram as Honey Art Cafe as well. Um, you'll also get a invite to our grand opening at the end of summer 2016 for Honey Art Cafe. Hope to see you guys around.